Hello everyone, this is Shana and I'm here today with another video to help you with your homework. This video is going to involve solving a problem with um, cylindrical shells and integration by parts. So let's take a look at it. This problem is number 67 from section 7.1. It says use the method of cylindrical shells to find the volume generated by rotating the region bounded by the curves y equals the cosine of pi x over 2, y equals 0, and the line x equals 0 to 1 about the y-axis. So I have a very crude picture up here. This is the y-axis. We're rotating about the y-axis. We know that at 0 cosine pi times zero is um, zero, cosine of zero is one, so we have the point zero one. And at one, cosine of pi times one over two, cosine of uh, pi halves is zero. So I've got something that looks like this, more or less. And we know that the line y equals zero is another term for the x-axis. So we have a region bounded by the x-axis and by this curve on the top. Um, we are using the method of cylindrical shells. So we're rotating this region around the y-axis. And in doing that, we're going to create a series of cylinders, okay? And the one thing to keep in mind is that the slices that you're taking, the cylindrical slices that you're going to take are parallel to your axis of rotation, which is why you can see I have a, um, a cylinder in the middle of the diagram. You can see right here I have the cylinder in the middle, and it's parallel to your axis of rotation. The radius is the displacement from the axis of rotation to so the sum slice in our rectangle. We don't know how far out this rectangle is going to get. It's going to get further and further out as we slice until we've moved all through the picture, um, all through the shape. So the general formula for our volume is volume is the integral from A to B of 2 pi r h and then your thickness. Well, remember here that also because we're slicing parallel to the y-axis, that our integration factor is going to be with respect to x. So our rectangle is vertical, but it's going to move in a horizontal fashion because our slices are um, going to be vertical. So we're going to move horizontally down the x-axis. Therefore, we're integrating With respect to x, so our radius here is x, and our height is going to be the distance between the top of our function, which is cosine pi over 2 um, times x, and 0, which just gives us cosine pi over 2 times x. Now, that leaves us with volume Oh, and we're going from 0 to 1 because those are the limits that were given in the problem itself. So we're integrating from 0 to 1, 2 pi x cosine pi over 2 dx. We're going to let u be 2 pi x. Yes, I could have pulled out the 2 pi before I integrated. du then is 2 pi dx dv is the rest of my integrand, cosine pi x over 2 dx. 
and v is the integral of that. Here I did a little substitution just to show you a little more about this integral because we're going to be evaluating um, another similar integral later on in the problem. So if I let w be the argument of cosine, w is pi x over two. So the derivative of w with respect to x is pi halves, and that gives me two dw is pi dx or two over pi dw is dx. A little bit of algebra there. And what that leads us to is a substitution where V is the cosine, the integral of the cosine of W dW times two over pi. And remember that the integral of cosine is the sine. So we have two over pi times the sine of W. Now, if we plug in to the integration by parts formula, we have the integral from zero to one of two pi x cosine pi x over two dx is equal to u, which is two pi x, v, which is two over pi times the sine of pi x over two by the result that we just got above. And then we're going to subtract the integral from 0 to 1 of 2 over pi times the sine pi over 2 du, which is 2 of pi. So if you look carefully here, and technically I should have, I made a small error here, this... Um, this piece should have limits on it. This should have limits from zero to one. I put it on the next step, but I should be integrating from zero to one here. So, okay. Then now, this pi and the pi on the two cancel. So I end up with negative. When I integrate the sine, I'm going to get the negative cosine. So I have minus four. Where did the four come from? Two times two, that's four. And I have two over pi cosine pi. Um, where did the pi over 2 come from? The integral of this sine pi x over 2 is going to be very similar to this integral, which we know was 2 over pi sine. My only difference here is that I'm integrating the sine. So I'm going to end up with 2 over pi, but negative, because it's going to be cosine pi x over 2. So even though the pi cancels out here, the integral of the result, which is the integral of um, sine pi x over two is gonna give me two over pi cosine pi x over two and then negative. So that's where that came from. And then I have, eight over pi cosine pi x over two. So now, if I come over here and change my tool, then I have, let's scroll down and let me get rid of my drawings for a minute. I went ahead and um, Took another picture of this, so it would be a little easier to see the bottom piece of it. So we have this first piece. We have um, 2 pi x times 2 over pi 
sine um, pi x over 2 gives us 4x because, again, the pi's cancel each other here and here. So we have 4 over pi. So this is going to be, I'm sorry, 4 not 4 over pi, the pi's cancel. So I get 4 times the sine of pi x over 2 from 0 to 1. I remembered my limits this time. And again, here, this is 8 pi times the cosine of pi x over 2. Remember that this minus between the two, between the expression and the integral and this minus are the same. When I pull out the sign, I get an additional minus. So this minus and this minus make this plus down here. So I have eight over pi times the cosine of pi x over two. Remember I've already integrated. So it's just a matter of plugging in the numbers. So I have, 4 sine 1 times pi over 2, 1 half pi. The sine of pi over 2 is 1, so I have 4 times 1, that is 4, minus sine of 0. Well, that's 0, so I left it off. That's 4 times 1 minus 0. Now I need to do this other piece. I have positive 8 over pi, right? and it's cosine of 1 half. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so I have 0 here, right? And then I subtract, and I get cosine of zero, which is one, so I have minus one, and I have eight over pi times zero minus one. If I clean that up, that gives me four minus, because zero minus one is negative one, four minus eight over pi, and that final expression is my answer. I hope that this helps you with a little bit of a tricky problem. The setup might have been more tricky for you than the integral. Shells is not something that we do a lot of in Calc 1, and we don't often return to it. So sometimes that's a tricky concept for students. But the, the arithmetic for the integral was almost as hard as setting up the integral. In any case, I hope that this has helped you. And I will see you in my next video very soon. Thanks, folks, for watching. Take care. And bye for now.